A lot of us are getting ready for a new academic year and others have already returned to school so this is the perfect time to have a look at the new forms and how the changes made over the recent couple of months might affect our teaching. This is another flipped classroom tutorial. First of all, how do we create a new form? Well, there are two main ways of doing this. First of all, you can surf to forms.google.com and then click on the plus icon. Now, the reason, the main reason for doing this is so that you also have access to the many different templates already available within Google Forms. I tend to use the Google Drive and I click on New, More and Google Forms. Now, let's start creating our very first form. Let's start by giving it a title. Now, this form will be about the computer science subject and I will be asking the children and students in class some of their ideas about the upcoming school year and what they would like to learn. So my title will be Computer Science. Now this will also become my file name, so you will see it automatically transfers the file name as a title. And you will see that I already have a banner at the top. Now this banner is now a darkish blue color but we can change this color we can have a red banner or any color we'd like and we can even use an image so let's go ahead and click on this image now we are already presented with lots of different themes that we could use and this is a huge time saver if you are just looking to create a simple form to send to your students or to student parents then this will save you a lot of time of course, you can also upload photos or you can find a photo in your album. Now for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to go with a theme and I'm going to stick to a galaxy image. Now you will see this theme is being uploaded and there we go, it automatically matches the background to your photo. And the same thing happens when you upload your own photo. So let's have a look at the different options we have. We can, first of all, we can add a question. So, what would you like to learn? Our first option is computer programming and our second option is spreadsheets. This is a multiple choice. Now let's have a look at some of the other options and other types of questions. Now we can click on this little plus symbol to add a question and immediately we have a choice between all these different types of questions. So we have a short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, checkboxes, drop down, a linear scale and a multiple choice grid. Now we'll have a look at those in a minute. We also have date and time. Now I'm going to go to short answer. I'm going to say what is your class name? Now obviously I want to keep this form, let's say, anonymous, so I'm going to ask for a short answer to text. I'm going to make this required because I do want to know which class wants to learn what. And then the next will be a paragraph. How do you feel about computer science as a subject? And again, this is simply as a demonstration. Now, just to make it a bit more interesting, let's insert an image just to demonstrate how that works. So we can, again, upload, take a snapshot, a URL of an image, use our albums or Google Drive, or do a Google search right within the Google Forms. I'm going to do a Google search, and I'm going to search for a, let's keep it simple, keyboard. A keyboard, let's search for a keyboard. Here we are. Select this image. And you will see that this image is now nicely on the left aligned. So I'm going to align this to the center. And I'm going to ask a question about this image. What is the image below? Now the question has been asked, but obviously there is nowhere for our students to answer this question. So what we need to do next is again insert a short answer question. 
the image is a and then they will answer. Now the tricky thing about having an image and then a follow-up question for the image is that you have to make sure that your students see the image before the question is asked. Now the reason I'm saying this is that Google Forms gives you underneath under settings gives you the option of having your questions randomized so having them sent out in random order this is great if you're sending out a quick assessment and you do not want students sat next to each other to obviously cheat so the way you do that is go to settings and you can also shuffle your question order now obviously when you are using an image and a follow-up question you do not want to shuffle the question order let's carry on so for now we have a multiple choice a short answer text long answer text we have inserted an image we can also add titles descriptions we can even add video and I would suggest use video students love watching a video clip at their own pace some will fast forward and then simply have some follow-up questions to check if they've watched the video we can also add a section so let's go ahead and do that now we're going to add a section and we can say after section 1 continue to section 1 section 2 or submit the form now I'm going to go to section 2 so after they've done section 1 go to section 2 and section 2 will be slightly different now having sections enables you to use responses your students give you and move from section 1 to section 3 back to section 2 however you want it to happen now this question I am going to use one of the new question types and that will be a multiple choice grid now this is new and I will show you in a minute what it looks like it's a very powerful type so what would you like to learn about row one we will have hardware then we will have row two software column one let's say keyboard column two let's say mm, Photoshop now whenever you want to preview your form simply scroll up and click on the little I symbol and this will generate a preview so as you can see we have our multiple choice what would you like to learn oh, I would like to learn some computer programming what's your class name test class how do you feel they can answer this question as well the image below it's a keyboard and I go to the next section now having different sections also allows you to have a form as you're teaching in class you simply give your students the instructions once they've completed the first section of the form they click on next and you move on to the next section so what would you like to learn about hardware software keyboard Photoshop so I would like to learn learn about some hardware keyboards and then software Photoshop Now this is a good way of getting information from your students or simply having a quick check to see if the hardware links up with keyboard software links up with Photoshop again you can use this for many many different things after they've clicked submit they are presented with your response has been recorded submit another response and again this can be tweaked to fit your needs so let's go back to our form and let's do that right now let's go to our settings and we are going to limit it to one response which means that they will have to sign into Google and respondents can edit after no they cannot but they can see a summary of responses that would be nice and then here we are going to change the confirmation message to thank you save and right now our form will look already will look slightly different as you can see some questions are required so I'm going to say test class 
and then when I go to next and I submit this final page you will see thank you see previous responses so now they can no longer submit a new response another option is to go to settings and go to quizzes now this is very very powerful if you are one of those teachers who loves to quiz in class now I will do a whole other video just on quizzes but when you click on this little slider it will turn your form into a quiz and you can release the marks immediately you can give different marks to different questions and it will automatically grade it for you but more about that in a different video so let's save our form for now and there are now various options for us to send this to our students we can simply click on send and we can choose to send it via email we can get a link and then we share this link to use the shortened URL this is a real time saver or we can embed it and then you simply embed it onto your learning platform once your students have answered the questions you will find the answers under the responses tab here you can get a summary of all your responses or you can find individual responses if you prefer to see all this data in a spreadsheet simply click on the spreadsheet icon we are going to create a new spreadsheet and what Google is going to do now is it is going to create a Google spreadsheet with all the data collected from this form this was a quick overview of the new Google Forms. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And of course, if you find these videos helpful, don't forget to subscribe and share them across all your social media platforms. Thank you and I will see you in the next one.